Thank you very much, and I appreciate it. I'd like to begin by expressing my appreciation to the Korea Economic Institute for this tremendous privilege. It is a true joy and honor to be here today. I'd also like to applaud KDI for taking the time to commemorate the anniversary, the 107th anniversary of the Korean immigration to the United States. It is such a pivotal and monumental uh, moment in the life and history of the Korean American community. And to my fellow appointees, how are you all? It is great to have this chance to share this with you here today. Both of you are rock stars. You know, a lot of people ask me all the time, how, why are you in public service? How did you get involved in public service? And how in the world did you get involved in the level of interest in transportation policy as opposed to the really big issues like health care reform or international relations or education or the economy? I'll try to answer a few of those questions, but it really all comes down to my parents, Luke and Chris Kim. A similar story is how um, they are the reason why I'm in public service and why I've been doing this for my, my whole life. They set an incredible example for me and my brother many years ago while we were growing up in Davis, California. My parents are highly unusual uh, when it comes to first generation Korean immigrants. My father, Luke Kim, uh, was a psychiatrist and he spent his entire career working in the California state prison system where he provided psychiatric care to some of the most hardcore criminals of our time, including Charles Manson and Sirhan Sirhan. You remember that name? He was the one who assassinated Robert F. Kennedy. He also took a strong interest in being very actively involved in cultural psychiatry and spent a lot of time addressing the mental health needs of Korean immigrants and Asian immigrants. Uh, he was seen as a real pioneer among his peers in the world of psychiatry. My mother, too, was uh, very unusual in her, in her career choice. She was a high school teacher, but she did not teach math, she did not teach science, art, music, history, or anything like that. She taught sex education. <laughs> a very unusual choice. <laughs> very unusual. Can you imagine the first generation immigrant teaching sex ed? <laughs> What it means is, I'm supposed to know something about sex. <laughs> you can quiz me later if you like. <laughs> Essentially, both of them dedicated their lives to community service. And it wasn't just through their nine to five jobs. They threw themselves into all manner of civic activities uh, in Davis, California, whether it was local politics, church, education, you name it, they were involved in nonprofit advocacy groups. They were firm believers in the idea that you really have to do it for yourself and you have to stand up, not just for yourself, but for the community at large. Otherwise, you simply don't exist. And you also reinforce the stereotype that Korean Americans and Asian Americans are content to sit on the sidelines and watch the world go by. They were not allowed, they were not allowed to do that. One example I want to briefly mention is the legal case involving Chol Su Lee. Some of you may know this case. This goes back to the 1970s. <coughs> Chol Su Lee was a young immigrant from Korea who was wrongly convicted of murder in San Francisco's Chinatown. Uh, and he spent over a decade of his life on death row. Uh, eventually, he was exonerated and was released. Uh, but at the time, it, it, was, it was clearly the case of legal injustice, and it sparked an outrage within the Asian American community uh, most of the Asian Americans were involved, and a smattering of Korean Americans were also involved, including K.W. Lee, who was known as the godfather of Korean American journalists, whose investigative reporting uncovered the story. K.W. was the one who got my parents involved, and before long, a legal defense committee was formed, and most of the meetings were held in my parents' living room. It went on for many, many years. And I was really too young at the time to fully understand what this is all about. And I was wondering why so many rabble routers were invading my parents' living room each and every weekend. But perhaps it was through osmosis or simply through their living example that I actually eventually came to understand the value of public service, community service, and working for the well-being of others. Little did I know that a seed was, was planted in me at a very young age, and it was only a matter of time that I, too, would find myself going down a similar path as my parents. Fast forward a few years, I'm not going to bore you with the details of my career history, but suffice it to say that I've had um, 
It's a great honor of working at all three levels of government, local, state, and federal, in both the executive and legislative branches. And I've tried to maintain some level of community involvement uh, through organizations like the Korean American Coalition and others, uh, but it pales in comparison to the efforts of my parents throughout their, their lifetime. But I am a public servant uh, at heart, and I will always keep it be. I want to spend just a moment talking about political appointments and what they mean for the community. All of us here have been in our respective positions for less than a year. I've been at DOT for about six months. When I was appointed last summer, I have to admit it was a thrill and an honor. Uh, and many friends and family members shared in that excitement. But the point I want to make is that I choose to view this appointment not as an individual accomplishment, but rather as a collective achievement. And there are a couple of reasons for this. First, anytime someone from our community gets appointed to a government position or elected public office, it's a sign that we are coming of age politically speaking, and that we are achieving a greater level of political maturity and sophistication um, over the years. It says that we are now becoming more active in the game as a group, and that we're making a difference in getting votes. The second reason for viewing this as a collective achievement is that I did not do this on my own. Secretary of State Hillary Rodham Clinton wrote a book a few years ago, It Takes a Village to Raise a Child. The same can be said for political appointments. You simply cannot do this alone, no matter how good you are. It takes a lot of people to help make it happen. And I think Howard and Bill would go and agree on that point. If it weren't for elected officials and community leaders who believed in me and went out of their way to support my efforts to serve the administration, I would not be here today. As much as we all like to think that we are self-sufficient and can do it on our own, make it on our own. The reality is that when it comes to getting a seat at the table, you're not going to get very far without the help of others. It is truly an exercise of teamwork, strength in numbers. And so that's why every time a Korean American or Asian American gets appointed or elected, and thankfully there are more and more these days, and the numbers are growing, it's noteworthy, but more importantly, it really reflects our community's continued progress and rising success in the civic community. And so as we mark the 107th anniversary of the Korean American community, that is something to celebrate. Looking ahead to the future, we still have a long way to go. But the collective talent, desire, and drive, especially among the younger generation, to get involved, to stir the pot, and to really make a difference, gives me a lot of hope that the Korean American community will continue on this upward journey, a journey that will involve achieving even greater levels of sophistication in American civic life, and also ditching the comfort of the sidelines and trading that in for the uncertainty, but yet the ultimately gratifying experience of being on the playing field where great things can happen. Thank you very much. Uh, that was a very terrific, very inspirational. And now it's my pleasure to ask 